Hello everybody, this is the KMN 1971 back again with another comic book collection spotlight video, number two. Focusing in on my uh, DC quote-unquote key issues. Uh, this, this video will try to cover um, letters B through P. Starting off with um, Black Lightning, number one. I showed this uh, comic off probably about two weeks ago. First appearance of Black Lightning, uh, no big deal, but uh, just one of those great characters from the, the Copper Age that I that I'm nostalgic over, considering my background of reading Batman and the Outsiders back in the day. Also from around the same time period, Booster Gold number one. Um, not the biggest Booster Gold fan. I'm not going to lie to you, but this came across my path for the right price. And it was before the Booster Gold movie that's not going to be tied into the mainstream DC Universe, uh, or rather DC Cinematic Universe, which I don't really think makes much sense. But um, it was before the movie uh, news broke, so I ended up getting this really cheap. Brave and the Bold, number 54, the first appearance of the Teen Titans. For me... Um, this is a grail. I'm a huge fan of the George Perez Mob Wolfman New Teen Titans. I just picked this book up this year. It's only a 5.5, but um, I love it. And it's definitely a, a top five book in my personal collection. This is one that I will never sell. Not that I sell books anyway, but this, this would want to be one of the ones that would be in that... Uh, it would be very tough to part with. Okay, Brave and Bold, number 59. If anyone here has uh, seen my first video, this was one of the first books that I've ever showcased. I picked this book up probably about three months ago, and uh, it's the first time that Batman started with, uh, well, it was the first Batman team up in the Brave and Bold title. Brave and Bold, number 79. Uh, for a long time, I thought this was the first Neil Adams Batman, but it is not. It's just the beginning of his um, of his run on the Brave and Bold title, which I ended up completing this year. So I'll just rock it through these books, seeing uh, most of you have seen most of them. So Brave and Bold number 80. Number 81. Eighty-two. Let me just clear some out. Eighty-three. Eighty-four. And of course, the most the most sought after out of that uh, group of books, number eighty-five with uh, Neil Adams' reimagining of the Green Arrow costume. Number 86. And then lastly, I'm my Brave and Bold run. Brave and Bold number 200, which uh, gets most of its fame now for being the first appearance of Katana. But I'm happy, and, and, and that's very cool, but it's also the first appearance of one of my favorite super teams, Batman and the Outsiders. little minor key here, but um, Crisis on Infinite Earths, number seven, the death of Supergirl, and that just, just that George Perez cover is just incredible. I remember being, well, obviously 1985 was a long time ago, so I was just a, a teenager, or a young teenager at the time, and this cover just blew my mind with all the heroes on it, and I just could not believe that DC was doing this at the time. My mind was blown. And then came this issue. <laughs> so, as far as uh, mega crossovers go nowadays, I, I try to tend to avoid them. But as far as the mega, quote-unquote, mega crossover goes, um, this is the end-all, be-all for me. Uh, there was never one that had so much impact, that changed so much, and that had ramifications that were uh, reverberated throughout the DC Universe for the next 20, 25, 30 years. 
DC Superstar Holiday Special. Um, the only significance for this is it's the first time that Frank Miller draws Batman, which I can see why some younger fans might not appreciate Frank Miller's art nowadays, but um, back then he was pretty revolutionary. And just like anyone else, like great musicians who tend to uh, lose their edge as years go on, and um, the same can be said about Frank Miller. But remember, art is uh, part of perception, so... Someone out there still really loves what Frank Miller's doing right now. I happen to be buying Dark Knight number three, but there is no way I can even compare that to um, to the stuff that he, that he did in the eighties. Part of that is nostalgia, and part of that is it's just it, it is what it is. The Demon Annual number two, first appearance of one of my favorite characters from God, the Mind of Garth Ennis, um, Hitman. Great character. Firestorm number one from his uh, original series. Another one of my favorite characters from um, my childhood, obviously. DC first issue special. Uh, Enter the world of the Warlord. This is the first appearance of Travis Morgan, the Warlord. Um, not a popular character by today's standards by any means, but one of my favorite characters from the DC universe, easily. Flash 138. First appearance of uh, the Black Flash. Flash 197, the origin of Zoom. Forever People, number one. The first full appearance of Darkseid, as we all know. Cannot get a bone white copy of this anymore, but when I bought this, uh, no one even really cared that Darkseid uh, first. I bought this book well over 10, 15 years ago. And the only reason I bought it, I didn't even know it was the first appearance of Darkseid. I just bought it because Jack Kirby drew Superman. That was the only reason. Gotham City Sirens, number one. Number two. Number three. Great cover. And number five. And this one goes for more than two, three, and four. Maybe it's just because it's the Harley cover. But a series that I definitely want to complete. And I wish I would have just picked them up off the rack back when they were coming out. But for some reason or another, my brain just wasn't working as well back then. Or maybe it was my budget. I have no idea. Green Lantern, number 141. The first appearance of the Omega Men, who... Um, once again, from the 80s, another group of characters that I have a, a soft spot for. I love the last series that just came out, too. The 12-issue series, I would definitely pick that up, um, if I were you. Holly Quinn, number one, from her first ongoing series. Jonah Hex, number one, from his first ongoing series. The House of Mystery, number 290. The first appearance of I, Vampire. I can't even really remember this story very well. I, I didn't really care for it from what I remember, but I think it only cost me like three. between. It was one of those three, between three and five dollar haulers. Jimmy Olsen, 134. The first cameo appearance of Darkseid. As we all know. And um, it's not perfect. It's probably mm, a 6.0 to 5.5, but I do not care. I, it only cost me like 10, 12 bucks. And I already purchased this book when the craziness had already kind of started, uh, but before Batman versus Superman. So the book cost me probably, I think it was like 12 or $15. I could not uh, whip out my debit card quick enough. Another book that I've shown off before in the past. Jonah Hex Spectacular, featuring the, the death of Jonah Hex. And here is another book that I just picked up this year that I was just, I, I was so happy to get it. Justice League of America, number 21. The, the first crossover between the JLA and the JSA. There are certain um, uh, me, uh, team ups that I really go for or confrontations. Uh, Superman versus Shazam. Um, 
the the thing versus the Hulk, Wolverine versus the Hulk, um, and when whenever the JLA and JSA teams uh, team up. I'm a big fan of comic book history, and I feel this is a huge piece of comic book history right here. And I picked it up for a mere fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. It is a, a fine minus copy, but I could not believe if you. I had no idea that I would own this book for under a hundred dollars this year. That's crazy. But the book and it and and it was on eBay. Just goes to show you, after a book has been loitering around on eBay for a, a long time, you know, don't be afraid to sh show somebody, you know, give somebody a, a low offer. Be polite about it, but you never know. Sometimes it, it actually does pay off. Justice League of America, 137, the first uh, confrontation between Superman and Shazam, or Captain Marvel, however you want to address them as. Commandy, number one, some Kirby greatness right there. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, number one. A minor key, but I, I just like it because it's the first appearance of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And uh, any excuse to show off an Alan Moore comic. Legends, number three. The first appearance of the modern Suicide Squad. Legion of Superheroes. I'm a huge Legion of Superheroes fan. Uh, well, at least for the Paul Levitz, Keith Giffen um, era, and for a couple of uh, little storylines here and there afterwards. But great stuff right here. Uh, Legion of Superheroes number 38, The Death of the Silver Age Superboy. It was a crisis cleanup. Mr. Miracle number one. Mr. Miracle number two, which is, I believe, the first appearance of Granny Goodness. I'm not sure. New Gods number one. Um, great copy, but as you can see, the colors have faded a bit on it. But other than that, great copy. Nothing wrong with it. Omega Men number three. First appearance of Lobo. Which, uh, keep an eye out for this book. I mean, people are already eyeing on it now, but, um, never know. All it takes is a trailer, uh, a good trailer, and, um, this book could take another jump. So, who knows? Power Girl, number one. Uh, Adam Hughes variant, obviously. And her last issue, Power Girl, number 27. Another series that I'd like to com like to complete. Okay, and that will lead us to the preacher section of the video. So, starting off, well, actually, let me clear these out first. Take a little room. Okay, starting off, preacher number 66. I have uh, pretty much the entire preacher run, with the except uh, with the exception of like maybe 12 issues, but. This was such a great run, such a great run, one of my all-time favorite runs, and it's great that it's finally getting the, the respect that it deserves, at least uh, the monetary ex respect that it deserves. Number 51, which is uh, it ha it features a preview of 100 bullets. Number 13. And here is just some early issues. Number six. Number five. Number four. Oops. Number three. Great cover. Number two, and of course, and the one top loader book of the run, uh, of the haul, or rather of the vid, sorry, um, Preacher Number One, which, just a fan, I bought these books probably about, I don't know, maybe eight years ago, off some guys uh, that used to come into 
place I used to work, and he was a comic collector. I was a comic collector. He wanted to unload some of his collection. And this was um, well before there was any kind of series talk and the Preacher series had already come to an end. So I went from, like, I think, I want to say this book was only worth, like, $10 when I bought it. And he, all the books that I used to buy off of him, I'd give him half price of whatever the wizard value of the book was. So... I just bought them because I always wanted to read them, and I was a fan of Garth Ennis. I'd already been reading Hitman, and what a great series done by uh, Garth Ennis and, of course, the late, great Steve Diller. I still can't believe Steve Diller is gone just like that, but outstanding stuff. Now, I was tagged by, I believe the YouTuber's name is Jib Autolicus, or Autolicus. I'm sorry if I don't know your name, dude, but, um... So, top five uh, cover tag. I, I'm not going to show my top five covers of all time, just per se, because... Um, oh, just per se. Well, that doesn't even make any sense. Sorry for the word sausage. Um, just because uh, I'm going to be showing off a lot of those covers in the upcoming comic book um, collection spotlight videos. Uh, basically, the all-time iconic covers... Of, which I some of them I've already shown. My all-time favorite Batman cover is Doc Knight Returns number one, with you know Batman silhouette with a lightning bolt. Um, Days of Future Past from X Men would be probably my favorite X Men cover. Uh, the Neil Adams Superman breaking the chains would probably be my favorite Superman cover. So those would be like the most iconic covers that I can think of, which will be shown in future videos. These covers, however, are easily accessible in my collection. I don't have to dig them out. Uh, I love the covers. And the, the criteria that I used was a combination of favorite artists, favorite characters, and just, I think that, well, everyone considers, you know, some of the covers that I mentioned as iconic covers. And that's happened over time. These are covers that I think have the potential to be iconic covers over time. So starting off with my favorite cover artist, or my favorite artist of all time period, the great Jim Lee with this iconic um, Superman a cover from Superman number 204. Pretty great run. Another one of my favorite artists and another one of my favorite franchises, Star Wars. Uh, Adam Hughes, Star Wars Rebel Heist number two. Um, being a guy my age, it was pretty much impossible not to have a crush on Carrie Fisher. And uh, this is one of those Adam Hughes covers that he draws her incredibly sexy, yet not really revealing anything. So, tip, tip of the hat to the man, Adam Hughes. Another one of my um, favorite artists of all time, the late, great Michael Turner. This is a variant to Teen Titans number one. And uh, this series, this was such a great series from Jeff Johns and Mike McCone. Um, the last time I really thought that they had the Titans franchise going in the right direction. Batman number 47 from Volume 2 from the New 52. Uh, I, I own this entire volume. Uh, I don't own many of the variants, but I had to pick up this. I'm a huge Alex Ross fan, and when I saw him kind of doing a, a new rendition of uh, Batman, the Batman Harley Quinn cover, I just thought it was incredible. So you have Batman, Joker, Harley Quinn, all done by Alex Ross, kind of uh, hom homaging himself. So that doesn't sound right, actually. But anyway, I thought it was a fantastic cover. And lastly, another one of my all-time favorite franchises and one of my all-time favorite artists, Dave Finch. And um, one, this is, I don't, well, it might be one of the multiple variants where it wasn't, um, I think it was like equally given out or whatever. I, I, I can't really think right now. But um, this has... Well, let me just open it up. We have time. This, this video is already going long anyway, right? So, one thing this has going for it, as you know, I'm a fan of anniversary issues. Two, it's done by David Finch. Three, it's the X-Men. Four, it is also an X-Men wraparound cover that happens to... Sorry all the glare, but it folds out. There's a lot of Dave Finch goodness to be had on this cover. Features 
Oh, I mean, if you love anniversary issues that celebrate history, this cover is all about that. It has just so many different X-Men characters. Um, wrap around fold out cover. So yeah, that would have to be in my top five um, covers uh, from my cover tag. Um, let's see, who could I tag that I haven't seen one of those top five cover tags? Uh, if you feel like it, Dr. Von Schiller, let's see what you got, buddy. That's all I have for this week. Um, I will be back next week. I'm not sure if it will be part three of the comic book spotlight videos or to finish off my DC keys or if I'll just do an old school comic book haul video. It depends on how the Black Friday sales go along. Okay guys and girls, I will see you next week. Everyone have a great one out there and uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, take it easy. See ya.